701. So we're going to get started. We have a quorum. We have seven members present. So um, I think we can get going. So we're going to do roll, roll, roll call first. So Miss Buker. Not present. Okay. Um, Mr. Christian. There you are. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Decker. Thank you. Uh, Miss Edinger. Here. All right. Uh, Mr. Aaron, uh, Mr. Finling, nope. Mr. France, here. Um, Mr. Gortz, here. All right. Mr. Harbauer, yes. Uh, Mr. Patrick, all right. Miss Salt, here. All right. Miss Westmeyer, here. All right. And have Councilman Smith in attendance, and Rob Ross. Thank you. All right. So, on to the next part. <clears throat> uh, has anybody had a chance to look at the meeting minutes? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, have an aye. Okay, cool. That passes, so that's, we're done with that. Action items from previous agenda. I don't think we had any action items. Anybody want to? Well, can I ask a question sure. about that? Like, and, you know, just since I'm kind of a newbie, like when I looked through here, it looked like there are action items, you know, like, I mean, I know it just says um, the main action is items is for us to give, um, you know, ideas to Jonathan. But, you know, like when I look at this, I look at like Bicentennial Park, you know, this and that was an action item to get an update on like what uh, Todd reported on the swings, you know? Yeah, so, I, so forth, I know. my thought on that is that then I come this meeting and I say, okay, based Here. on what I said last time, this is what I noticed this time. Okay, so you would look at the, like whatever you suggested yes. last time to see if there are any updates. Because I, I guess that was my other thing, is like when we're doing this reporting, you know, of stuff, are we reporting from to the city? You know? well, this is my chance, right? Go for it. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, you know, I think Jonathan was very kind in taking on that possibility, but we'd like the opportunity to address any issues as you see them rather than wait for this meeting. So I would encourage you to email myself and Greg. You can send it to Greg directly since he's our representative. Okay. And then email, if it's okay by you, I'm fine. Just copy me, and if it's okay by you, I, I love the first shot of these issues because you know we're out there we do and I was going to bring this up at this meeting but we do monthly audits now in fact we'll have one tomorrow we'll try to schedule them uh, when they make sense for the operation but we'll go out and look at this you know all the playgrounds and all the parks we may miss things but I may do the audit tomorrow and on Wednesday something breaks on a swing set but if we know about it I can respond right away yeah. I mean it's great that there's multiple eyes and trust me people aren't afraid to pick up the phone and call us and say they notice something which is fine and, and uh, we'll, we'll take care of it within reason, you know, as quick as we can. We prioritize on a daily basis and we take care of things that are safety related first. And we take care of things that are water leaks in the park or any of that stuff. But it happens pretty frequent. Unfortunately, we're having a lot of vandalism, so we take care of those things. And I don't know if, that's on that. if I get a chance, if things go smoothly. Yeah, I'd like to have a few minutes to just talk about some things that I'd like to bring up. But okay. the answer in a long winded response, feel free to email us okay. first. I'd like that shot take care of those things immediately. Okay, good. Okay. But in terms of these meetings, like it wouldn't start with, say, the first park, like we wouldn't start with, you know, can the city give a little update on, like, you know, what, you know, Todd suggested or recommended from the last meeting, you know, oh, yes, we got, we <coughs> did this, we did that, or we didn't, and then he would move on and report on any new things. No, it doesn't. Well, I don't, we can. I mean, that, that could be a way, I thought it was always kind of like um, uh, action item for us, 
that we had, not necessarily like the, the things that we brought up previously with the, the city. It's always, I've understood it was always something that actually it was that we had previously brought up and we're working on ourselves, but I could be wrong. I just, I mean, how would we work on these things ourselves though? Um, I think it was, for instance, um, previously bringing ideas to like, um, uh, maybe the crosswalk, like we've talked about the crosswalk in, in the past, like bringing ideas, talking about that um, to the next meeting. So sometimes like something's brought up to us and then get to look at it and then it goes, goes out. That's what I was kind of thinking. But I guess like the way I look at it, like I, it would be maybe more instead of like, you know, start by park and like, again, based on what was said last time. So for example, taking those swings by Centennial's the first park and you know, maybe the city could, you know, Greg, when he's here or whatever, could say, you know, yeah, we, we got your message. We looked and yes, we agree. We're going to do that or we did it, you know, um, either we're going to do it. We didn't, you know, we're not going to do it or we will do it on such and such date. And then then Todd's you know, job would be to follow up and then just make sure that, okay, yeah, you know, next time he's out there, check and go, yep, that was done, you know, and so that, like, that whole, you yeah, know, task you, was wrapped up. I view us more as an advisory role. That takes, that isn't sounds, isn't yeah. that advisory? Yeah, we, no, that's more supervision. <laughs> okay. When you're, when you're saying, here's the date, this has got to be done, and did this happen? Yeah. That's not something I would want to do, even for like so a library. So we're just sort of yeah. advising just, them. We, we, we're right. a voice to the community is how I view it to bring them things. That okay, but I'm, I'm still just trying to understand, but if there is an issue, so back to the swings, does he only report it one time or does he just he could go keep see, repeating he it? Probably he probably could repeat it. Yes, yes, that's no. how I would treat it. But I think it's case by case, too. I think it's you know big picture items or things that we might not be able to respond to right away. And I think he, he mentioned he hit it right on the head. I mean, yeah. operational things we can take care of and report on it each month. Greg will. Okay. Yes, we fix the swings. I'm sure Tom will okay. speak on behalf of his park. Okay, Little things so, so something's done and yeah. corrected. You guys will comment it on it. Otherwise, yeah. he can just say, keep saying, okay, the swings still need fixing or whatever. Or I can he report directly to him during the month. You don't have to wait till the end of the meeting. And then when he comes next month, he can, he can say, say, oh, yeah, report on that. And correspond okay. and took care of the issue, whatever. Okay. And, and, and the other thing, too, at the very end, we'll have a review of action items, too. So if there's something you want to add, I mean, it's at yeah. the end. Okay. And we can say, is this something you want to add to the action items? Okay. Um, but yeah, we good. are uh, advisory capacity. That's right. Yeah. It's in the uh, bylaws and also in the uh, city code that arrives. Right, so. But that's a great question. Right. So, thank you. Okay. Sure. All right. Uh, so, are we good? Should we move on? Yeah. All right. Um, so, we approve the meeting minutes. Uh, park reports. So, we can start. Uh, Lindsay's not here, so Eisenhower is report that unless. Did she send it? She emailed Yeah. All right. I think it was the same stuff. Same thing. Yeah. The, 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 you know, that she'd already mentioned. She, she noticed some normal wear and tear on, yeah. on those, okay. it? those are wear yeah, items. Yeah, just. Play equipment. Yeah. Some, yeah. We may or may not have to do that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes those things, colors fade out, um, yeah. and you can't necessarily. Paint. It's it's a heavily used park with uh, depending on yeah. plastic, yeah. plastic or metal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, Rotary Park. Um, it's been pretty busy now with the uh, weather being nicer. The park has a lot of uh, a lot of visitors. Um, the rugby team has been using it a lot, um, but I have noticed towards the back of the grass lot, um, it's kind of worn down more. There's some areas where there's not really any grass, it's just kind of dirt and mud. Um, that's about it for that one. Can I ask about the rubber surface around the merry-go-round in the place? Yeah. yeah, I can respond. We reach out to the contractor, the contractor's going to come out and make a repair. Okay. Yeah. That's disappointing. I've been part of the initial installation team for that. Yeah. The first in construction part and then the repair. And it's just like, I think it's just a bad design overall. I, I'm starting to worry about that product. Yeah, because we're about to hopefully do three additional parks. And I want to go with that, not the exact product that's on that, but similar rubberized material. It has so much wear around that circle. I know. Yeah. Have you looked at uh, the surface at side cut that's the same kind of undercoating that's more of oh. like the dark colored mulch? And then, 
So there's a good example at SideCut if you get a chance to look at their playground. On one part that has the same kind of coating as ours does, and then the main playground has, it looks like mulch, it's dark in color, but it seems a little bit more robust. Mm -hmm. The only issue is that it is almost black, so it'd get really hot in the summertime. Yeah. Uh, I just feel like it wouldn't wither away like the other stuff. We're gonna meet, I just talked to the contractor today by email, and hopefully we'll get something scheduled here in the near future, and I'll ask those questions maybe. I'm no engineer, so I don't want to challenge the design of the situation, but I'm starting to be and there's worried. There's definitely about soft that. spots out there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'll look into it. Cool. Anything else about rotary? Uh, rotary? Uh, Mr. Decker was going to report on Rivercrest. He is not here, so we'll skip that. Um, Orleans. Oh, that's, that's me. Um, okay, so a couple of things I noted, and here's another thing I don't know. So like I saw a couple of trash cans that just, you know, have locks, but they're not locked. Am I supposed to lock those? No. No, no there's an item where you could send us an email and we respond. Okay. Yep. Um, just the, there's like two monofilament recycling bins there that need to be emptied. Um, this is more about, you know, I, I know this has probably been there for years, but you know, the, the walking path to the bridge has, you know, so much concrete and drainage pipes and all that, you know, kind of to the right there when you first head, up, head along that trail. Is that, have you guys talked about cleaning that up? It's such a pretty park, you know? That's really not our, you're talking about just to the right of the parking lot? Yeah, on the you're on west the, side at the parking lot you're about to you know you're starting down the trail to you know the bridge yeah you know that was um i think that jonathan isn't that the forts you're talking about the orleans park right? yeah that, that's the city that that well maybe i need to know exactly what you're talking about I'm okay just if you were right to right of the parking lot to that the drainage i didn't but you'll you'll yeah there's tons of stuff that's always there if you walk you okay. know you park and you walk you know, on that path toward the bridge, there's just tons of stuff on the so right as you enter on the right hand right. side. Talking about on the, it must be on the, um, yeah, on the right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, on the right hand side. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, now I'm curious. Yeah, and I, that's new know, or something. I, I'm not sure if, you know, it's probably stuff that's been there for years. I'm not sure if it's from stuff, you know, washing up. I know hmm. other places in the park, like on the way over to the kayak place, there's no dumping signs, but this is oh, just right know. when you start We're walking down that. There, Beautiful walking trail. There's just yeah. tons of stuff there. Oh, um, okay. I'll look at it. Concrete. Not Sounds like stuff. it. Okay. Um, and then something else I noticed, like to the, you know, when you, if you're in the parking lot, you know, you've got the big field kind of on the left, and on the other, you know, so I think for that paved walking path was there. There was a river walk, or must have been, because. When you're on the paved path, you can see, you know, some little trails that kind of scoot off. And if you walk down one, it says, you know, like river, uh, river path. But if you, so if you walk that way and you try to walk along this path and there's a lot of, you know, trees, not huge trees, but down and stuff along the path. So I don't know if those paths are still supposed to be used or not. I mean, if so, it seems like we should either, you know, move those, the trees blocking the, those pathways, or if it's not, maybe we should remove that river path sign it's kind of back in there do you know where i'm talking about i think i have an idea about it yeah it, it, again it's it's off of that same walking path in between you know the parking lot and then that you know walking trail to the bridge okay um just and then if you're if you're heading down the path toward where the kayaks are uh there's a you know there's some the signage almost like right when you you know, or kind of, or if you're by the water treatment plant and you're starting to walk down to where the kayaks are, there's a sign there, you know, it's like nailed on to like a no parking and this and that, but one of them is a like clean fishing site with some little rules and things, but it's really faded and it's hard to read. So that probably needs to be replaced or updated. Um, and um, the last thing was just if down by the kayak racks, if you go all the way down to the end of, you know, where the cars can park down there, mm -hmm. there's, um, it looks like, looked like maybe some old caution tape wasn't up anymore, but just around the posts that I'm wondering might have been up there at some point to stop people from parking beyond that. 
And so I'm wondering if, if that was the goal, maybe to have a chain or something there instead of, you know, using caution tape. At the end of that stone drive. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, that's that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. can, I, can I make a kind of follow-up comment or question perhaps on yeah. this discussion of the semi-defined trails off the main, yeah. the main path? Just kind of seeing what's been done at, on the other side of the river there, how uh, the Maumee side has kind of cleaned up, I don't know, down river from uh, side cut. I don't think that's, that's side path. cutting. What's that? The tow path. Yeah, the yeah. end of the tow path that's been kind of cleared out and it's much more heavily used now. And we have, you know, we have river access as well, but it just seems like our views are not quite as clear as what's happening at, at, uh, at side cut. And, it sounds like what you're describing is similar to the trails at Davis Overlook. Uh, if you get to the parking lot there, you can get to the river. There's just not very defined trails. Um, certainly fishermen get back there and use that. I've been back there a few times, but it just, it seems like an opportunity to yeah. have more river access for people to get down there and do whatever it is they want to do. But um, I don't know if that's ever been a discussion point among Oh, I've only been around a couple of years, so I don't want to say it hasn't been at some point, but I'll, I'll ask the question. All right. Uh, <coughs> there is no uh, report on Hood Park. I do have a question about, are we, um, uh, my wife and I go down there all the time because we take that way down to uh, Riverside, but um, the uh, sidewalks around there are getting like really, uh, I mean, all the construction really caused that. Are we waiting for the, the boat club basically to finish up everything they need to do? Are you talking about up, up but, above? Up above, like uh, the path going down from the Commodore statue all the way down to uh, to the launch. Yeah, there's, well, there's some concrete work planned. Um, well, not actually concrete work. I, I should say I'm thinking about uh, further west towards Riverside Park. We're going to replace all that concrete. That's We'll get to Riverside here in a minute. We're waiting for the monument uh, at the end of May. We're going to have a big ceremony on Thursday before Memorial Day for the uh, Gold Star Memorial. Then we're going to repair all that walk there. But down to, uh, off to look at some of that. I don't know that there's anything planned on Water Street. I think is what you're thinking. Too. Uh, between Water Street and uh, oh. and in Front Street there. So the the path that curves around the the new um, the, the retaining walls right yeah. there on Hood. So they're just all kind of crush yeah. I'll look at it. That, okay. That's it for, for HUD, I think. So. Thank you. Uh, bicentennial. Sure. So um, <clears throat> I brought up the one of the garbage cans was broken last time. It's fixed now. So that's that's great. The swings have been adjusted. So the two plowler swings that were new, that were kinda, the chains were kind of tight. Those have been adjusted. Those are fine. And then there were, there were two uh, bigger swings that were new swings that were put in and I made a comment about two of them being kind of tight I think originally that swing set whenever it was installed probably had two pairs of swings and it's it's a little bit tight in there and then there was three in one and those or sorry two in one and those two were still getting pretty tight so one of those was just removed so now it's one in one as it was <coughs> where those new ones were in so I think that was just a decision that you or someone else made and, and thought that this just too tight and to create the space. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So they look good right now. Um, and then just I went there after it rained, and those same low spots are in the trail. Um, so I don't know if anything's planned to fill those spots in or not, but they they fill with water and they stay, they'll stay wet for the next few years or so. They just retain water. Other than that, everything looks good. good. Thank you. All right, Woodlands. So I went over to Woodland on uh, Sunday when it was beautiful. And uh, <clears throat> I'll nitpick, but the overall feedback is people love Woodland. Mm -hmm. I think it's tremendous. They love it for the community and we're thrilled with it. So that was kudos yeah. to you guys. The, the nitpicking was uh, disc golfers would like maybe some obstacles on seven and nine yeah. <laughs> to make it more challenging. I said, I'll bring it up. I don't know what we can do. Uh, one suggestion they had is uh, hole number 13, they shoot over the hole. And if there was going to be a sign to put by the pass that said warning disc golf, because they said a lot of time walkers have headphones on. And they're like, we do our best to make sure we don't ever 
hit anyone? They're like, but that was their concern. I said, sure. And they asked also if the city would ever think about doing like a disc golf tournament. We've actually had some. <laughs> and there was actually some conversation on that with CBD. Okay. Board. It so not really come of it yet, but uh, that's something that they. According to the guys, I talked to like this is one of the best courses in Northwest Ohio, and we should be extremely proud of it. So, yeah. and I can <clears throat> I can comment on that. We've I've worked with a group of three people that <clears throat> represent the original folks that designed that course. Okay. Actually, we've all, so we've added to the tee boxes, extending the tee boxes. Mm -hmm. Four of them I think we put in last year. I'm committed to doing four more this year. We've planted. Oh my gosh, we put in 20. I have a report that if I get we get time at the end. You can, award me some time I'll certainly go through some of the great things we've done in the last year and a half because I think we need to do more of that talk about some of the things that we have done um, but we've probably planted now 30 to 40 trees yeah to make that course more difficult so we have a plan yep for the, for the disc golf course and, and there I think it's a neat place and I think it's it's very well used now you get different opinions from people that walk the park that are concerned that's why we planted the trees strategically and yep locations where we hope the frisbees will get stopped before they hit a walker yeah they said a sign would make them feel yep. i said i am yep. sure there's beware of frisbee golfer signs we could yeah. find somewhere yeah. um someone asked about the sunshade i said i would assume once the winds calm down yes they'll probably come back usually we get those up sometime in mid to late may yeah and, um they like the all the outdoor dining at woodland they asked if there'd be more riverfront dining available or if the website for the city parks would list what parks have Picnic tables. Okay. I said. Might. I think it does on each individual park page. They or want or it might list just the pavilions. I think that's all it lists. Just not the picnic tables. I think the map, the city map lists picnic tables. Yeah. But correct. that's a hard copy. Yeah, that was that was a couple of the ladies requesting that younger kids and they like to go picnic. She said, "We have a spare room. There are more picnic tables." I said, "I'll oh, bring it up." Um. The other request is people like to walk at Woodland at night, but they can't because there's no walking after dark. I don't know if there's anything that can be done on that or post. I was like, they're like, why do we light it? And I said, probably because it's safe. And I said, but the rules, so keep them lit so that way, at least if the officer drive by, they're going see yeah. it's more for security than anything else. Because I've had the same question when I first got on council. Um, you know, why do we have to have lights in the market? They're closed. Well, it's so that way if someone hits it, they can see something that's not legal. Uh, the biggest problem is making certain that we can patrol it on a more regular basis if that's going yeah. to be the case. But yeah. That's exactly what Pat was saying. Yeah. I said, I, I don't know. I said, I'll ask. So, but I figured that was probably, you know. I was going to say, I can't confirm it tonight that I may have run through the park. <laughs> that's, uh, that's why we installed the lights. <laughs> <laughs> so, for advice, I'm going to look at the times of my friends back home. Yeah, but overall, just tremendous feedback. Yeah. Um, and the last one, I uh, I, there was a lacrosse tournament going on, a bunch of people out there. Everybody did like the idea, at least the ones I talked about, a bounce back wall for kids. Um, anything to get kids out they, was the big feedback. They think parents was in a lot. And then all I forgot, um, again, a wild card suggestion. Is there any plants that are like repel yellow jackets? Like I know somebody's mentioned mosquitoes. There's plants that mosquitoes don't like. Molly Panthers? Uh, yeah. But they want to know around the pavilion if there was any plants that maybe yellow jackets would be less attractive so they don't swarm people in the like a natural barrier. I go, I have no idea. Um, I'm not aware. I yeah. I just said they said I I said I can ask if there's any foliage that yellow jackets don't love. I guess that we could try to plant it by the eating areas. Gosh, that's weird because I mean it's they say it's just bad during the fall. One lady, it is. It always starts. Always is, like, but people are. You're some more proactive about there every Sunday. Yeah. Planting pollinator plant. You know, you want to be able to create pollinator plants. So yeah, I've not heard anybody say any plant something to deter yellow jackets. I don't know. That's interesting. I'll have to research. It. I have no idea. I, I, I just got to be curious, but I'm I not said, aware. Well, probably by the dining area and don't have a lot of sweets, but yeah, yeah, it's tough, especially in late September. Right? Yeah. yeah. So, but other than that, people love Woodland. They think you guys are doing a great job. It was in great shape, and a lot of people thought it was like a jewel of the city. So. So are you suggesting that folks have asked about more picnic tables at like Riverside Park? They said picnic tables by waterfront areas. Okay. So I just said, I, cause I got introduced myself and said, hey, I'm just walking around. Any feedback is, and that was a, there was a group of ladies there um, with kids and they said they liked to picnic, but they would like either an easy way to find them. I said, there might be, I go, I don't know. 
and so you're the paper copy but they said if we could have more picnic tables down by different areas of the river i said i'll bring it up there is some in the hood park that's kind of hard yeah. to see yeah we have to walk down along the side of the off to the yeah. Yeah, maybe it's, we need better advertising on them like uh, picnic, I, you know, I, as I said, I, I'm not aware of the picnic tables in Perrysburg, whether it's a... I can tell you during the pandemic, but I'm not running mm -hmm. along the Riverside, those trash cans are pretty full, so they don't keep working somewhere now. Yeah, yeah right? but it, it was just not, everybody was super friendly, and it was very, so, I mean, overall, they liked the park system, like, everybody was very uh -huh. complimentary of everything, so. That's a good idea. Yeah. So, so, on the topic yeah. of picnic tables, is yeah. there, would there ever be yeah, a chance was, to get... Yeah picnic tables at Riverside? Yeah. Would there be a chance to get picnic tables at Riverside? Yeah, I mean, I like to do things when you when you put a picnic table, I like to put them in places where <clears throat> they make sense, A, and then B, where you can maintain them properly. So they're not laying in the grass. The next thing you know, it's overgrown. I'd probably put a concrete pad. Yeah. That's what I've done for bleachers at all the parks. Those are things that I've <clears throat> done since I've started, is cleaned up some of those areas that weren't maintained in the past, because you can't get to them as easily. So. Yeah, there's always a chance I'll, I'll look at that opportunity. And you, you probably want a table that matches the rest of the That's furniture. True. It's probably more expensive. Um, but I did notice, so I, I, I could probably tell you where all the picnic tables are because I do that a lot with my family. Um, but yeah, at Riverside, that'd be great to be able to eat there, but we never go there because of that. We don't go there very often because of that reason. And then we actually went to um, Rotary Park to picnic and that pavilion is often reserved for obvious reasons and there's nowhere to eat so we ended up eating just on the benches next to the tennis courts which was not ideal so um, if if there would be a chance to get picnic tables out in the grass kind of like at bicentennial there's there's some picnic tables under the pavilion and then others that are just kind of out next to trees and, and so forth not underneath the building, but out scattered around it. You can't bring food into the playground, understandably, so really there's not a place to sit and eat if that pavilion is reserved. That's a great idea. Because there's so many families that go down there. Mm -hmm. It's an attraction. Yeah. It's an attraction in the area. So. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I have a milestone in Riverside. So, milestone, everything looks fantastic. So, it's That's great. Um, and uh, Riverside. Uh, again, I walk down there pretty often with my family, so I think the picnic tables would be kind of cool. Uh, uh, but everything looks really good down there too. So got to see some the bald eagle nest, which is very well from down there. It's kind of hanging out. I don't know if they're hatching anything, but um, otherwise, there's I don't really have anything to report about either of those parks. There, uh, Riverside, I think it's just a nice jewel yeah. down the river. So. Um, let's see here, uh, municipal. We don't have a report on that. I do have a question. Do we have mutt nits in mm -hmm. municipal? I can not see them. Okay. And they're used. <laughs> oh, I believe it. I, a gentleman. I was biking last Sunday, and a gentleman was letting the dog go on the grass. I'm like, are you gonna pick that up? And he, oh, you asked him. Oh, I asked him I because he was walking off. I was like, oh. is that gonna get picked up? He's like, I'm coming back. I'm like, okay. <laughs> but it was right there at the edge of that trail and I kind of was wondering because I was my wife and I were biking through there the, our our path never came across a moment so I don't know where they are uh, if they're from the like, parking sure they're, lot side or whatever but or, yeah typically right at the end <clears throat> of the parking lot so. okay because I knowing how people walk through the community in there like from one end of that multi-use path to the other but like it might be more natural for having a station at the beginning of those, the end and I guess the beginning and end of the, uh, the multi-use path there. We spend $4,000 a year on mutton. <coughs> Whoa. Uh, <laughs> trash bags. So it's quite a bit. I mean, so they're, they're used. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't well, going to, I was going to. Bring yeah. the fact that he didn't have his dog got the leash, he but the leash <laughs> yeah. it's yeah. funny because I had dogs myself. And we yeah. bring those along with us. Yeah, yeah. I don't expect somebody to provide yeah. those for me. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, and I do see a lot of people not doing it though. And it bothers me also. Yeah. So I say something every time. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, it looks great over there. And, and I have to say, the bleachers now with having those pads underneath them, and really like it gives. 
kind of gives a little, it's more prestigious too. It like feels it like up. it's an actual like park, you know, right. ballpark where right. people play in there. So, Thank you. so thanks. Um, we have Davis Overlook. I had Davis Overlook. Uh, looks pretty with all the trees. Mm -hmm. The uh, I'm assuming this was flooding, but the meadow driving down used to be mowed, but it was yep. pretty flooded, so I assume yeah. that's why. Yep. Um, I don't know how much we do to maintain the trail because it's really like one main trail and then like. Yeah, because it's a pretty through. narrow strip, and then yeah. it goes a little bit. Um, there's a tree that fell. Mm -hmm. I don't know. If we we'll get to it. Yep. Um, but that's all I had. Um, I, I mean, is there any plan for Davis Overlook in terms of making it a better? Because I, I mean, Not that I'm aware of. I love the waterfront, but I never go down there because there's just nothing to do really. But it would be cool if there was. There's there are walking. Yeah, <laughs> it's a narrow strip, so it's a little limiting. Yeah, it, it, it really. It's on short term plans right now. It's yeah, the lot to the other one. Is there just, I mean, is our property just basically like that path to yes. the water? Very narrow. So it's really just for fishermen to like have access. People that like to go down that area and view the river. Okay. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's actually used more than you'd think. Even when the fishing season's over, people do just like to walk down there. Yeah. I mean, isn't that cute little beach? Yeah. Yeah, there is. I mean. <laughs> you can call it a beach. <laughs> I'll call it a beach. But there's also signs, don't go left, don't go over there. The neighbors aren't real happy about people wandering off and yeah. going east and west down there yeah. and post it. It was pretty muddy, but again, it had just rained. So So there's no real chance that we'd ever be able to connect that to Fort Max, uh, the private property there. Yeah, I think the private property is there. I don't know if there's any easement, um, but it's a suggestion I made in the past. And I'm going to talk, so I think it would be great to see our river path go all the way along the river. Got some township in there too, so. Yeah, there's some that are not in the city, but that's true. Okay, cool. And then three meadows. Okay. I didn't have a lot. Uh, I went a couple weeks ago to go on the super hot out. You know, there's a lot of people. Uh, the concept was really nice. Uh, I just, the only thing I noticed was that there were a bunch of like big tree branches on the ground. But that also was because it was really windy that week, so I mean, that could have. Been fixed by now, but yeah, that's it. Yeah, a lot of windstorms this yeah. spring, you know, already yeah. before spring. Yeah. Well. yeah, we typically get those all cleaned up as they happen. Cool. All right, next is uh, recreation committee report. So I don't have the little ones with me today. So that was fun. <laughs> Uh, so uh, a few things to report. Um, we actually at our last recreation committee meeting, we had the uh, Bryson Trump McKinley Woods Park area uh, come in to voice some concerns. Their concerns is they do not want to see that turn into an active park. Um, so one of the things that I've talked about with the administration is seeing if we can come up with something internally before we go out and spend any additional funds on that. Uh, see if there's something that we can present to them and bring together before we go and spend any funds at this point. Um, just so we can try to show that this is going to be a very passive park and not something that they're going to have any fields or anything. Uh, the other thing, um, we talked about the summer rent program. Um, I don't know if anybody signed up for it or if they had it. Uh, we're going to be signing up for it too with our kids. Um, and uh, the system they're using this year is rec -Devs. It's working great. Uh, looks like Ralph's uh, nodding us. And uh, I, I know the conversation I had is I'd love to see us do this and expand it further for field rentals. Um, the uh, pavilion rentals, shelter rentals, and, and continue to see us expand this into uh, a more of a program um, place at this point. Um, the council also passed the ARPA funds uh, resolution uh, with a good chunk of that that's going into the parks. You're going to see a lot of updates coming into the parks over the next couple of years. Uh, so any feedback that you have as we're starting to come those conversations and be more happy to hear it, you are council's eyes and ears to uh, what's going on. Again, as I said the last time we were here, is a lot of residents, myself included, at times, even though Rob would probably say that I'm trying to say more at times of some issues. Um, we'll see stuff. We think we're going to report it. We forget about it. We never do. And that's why we need you. As all of you are out in those parks on a more regular basis, even though I have kids, we try to get to all of them. We, we never do. Uh, we need to hear about um, what's going on with the problems you're seeing, because if you're seeing it, everyone else has seen it. We want to make certain that uh, we're taking care of it right away. And Rob's team is doing a great job of, of getting 
and all that stuff. Um, the other thing that I know was mentioned in, um, in the recreations, we had a conversation about Rotary Park and the bathrooms again. Um, so we're still looking at seeing what we can do. I know we're out here looking into the heating on that and seeing that there's feasibility with that. There were some complaints about the porter uh, bottles over there uh, not being taken care of. I don't know if you guys had a chance to talk with them. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, I made the suggestion as well to Bridget that that uh, meeting. Um, he's looking at the Instagram. I think he's at that one. I don't remember anymore. Um, <laughs> but I know the porter body is all on the other side of the parking lot, if I remember correctly. There isn't anything near where the playground is. And when you have those off hot days, it'd be nice to have something right there until we can figure out how we can get heat into the actual bathrooms over in the there. So just something to consider as well that we're listening, we're hearing, we're seeing things. Um, I did take some notes down here from what everyone's saying on here. The other thing um, I'd like to just add, it looks like we're gonna be moving forward with those final sections of the uh, multi-use path along the river. So that's gonna finally be uh, uh, going. Uh, one of the holdups on that was our uh, stormwater um, management so that we've been doing. There was some talks about having to put a second sanitary line. Those look like if that's going to happen, we're five, ten years out. Let's get something in there now. Um, so we're finally going to get see that moving forward. I'm excited to see that a oh, little run, awesome. and this is going to be a nice thing to add on to there as well. Um, and I think the bond that you spent on 25 still closed right now for the repairs. Yep. So I'm yes. really hoping that opens up and. We get that going, at least the road's open for now. And talk about those windstorms. We had a tree in the cemetery fall yeah. fall over and onto a car that got pulled over by the police. So, well, so just talking about that time. <laughs> I, got, I got that call. That was a call. Awesome. But those winds are pretty bad out there. Um, any questions for the recreation that you want me to bring back or anything? Um, I, so we do we do a lot of classes through the city of Perry's Rec Department. Mm -hmm. There, there's like an official shortage, I think, for every sport. I mean, like you hear about like games being canceled at youth levels and constantly. Would there be any opportunity for them to offer like different referee classes to maybe like say like how to become a baseball referee, how to become a soccer referee, and then transition that over to the local community leagues? Um, because a lot of times it's hard for a kid during the school, which is a lot of times due to rough is like a high schooler might rough eighth grade and under, but they don't have time to get a certification during school but that might be something as a summer offering to say because it's a great way for the kids to get involved i don't know if that's a possibility or not but yeah i mean that i mean is it ohsa or ohio ohsa ohio athletic yeah i mean they're pretty yeah. they're pretty lenient. Yeah. yeah they're pretty lenient with um like the officials for like soccer like genoa there's a girl here locally who's 17 that does like a lot of games out there but there wasn't a way to get certified. I'm sure for soccer, you guys see the same. We're dying for us. Yeah. <laughs> so the same with every sport, like baseball. So I mean, I, it's constant. So maybe right, yeah. if that's something, then it gets the kids. I don't know. Yeah. I can respond. I actually as a basketball coach. Here. Okay. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Our kids actually will ref our junior program, yep. leagues and things. So we get them involved at a very early age. So they're involved in the junior jacket program. So for each sport, we I would encourage you to reach out to them. Like same with soccer, I would, they're already using I think quite a few of the younger kids yeah. to, for yeah. trainings, but not a ref. But to be well. certified, I think you got to take it to the next level and get certification. So I mean, you can we could start with reaching reaching out to whoever the contacts are. I just think there's a central schools. voice for it. There's a shortage for sure. Yeah, that I mean, and I don't know the answer to the problem. It just occurred yeah. to me that we're doing the classes. Yeah. That maybe it's a way to get some of these kids. Maybe something to look for the rep program next year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah. We won't be able to do it. No, I, I know it's it's, yeah. it's it's really though sad about like all around Ohio like games in every sport seem to be like they're just canceled. Sure. Yeah it's a high school level too. Yeah. Less reps for sure. So I don't know. I made it out. I'll talk to Charles who's also a high school <coughs> tennis coach who's our rec director. <laughs> I might have a question. It's more uh, are, Thanks. it's partially like parks and rec but it's also probably bigger than that. So state of Ohio, well state of Ohio recent are what is like is there a plan for the city when it comes to Bradford pairs? Because we have them all over our parks and we just, like the state has just declared them as an invasive species and we're like, <laughs> it, they're like, it's I, gone, they're gone. I don't know the plan, but actually um, on my business side of things, I was talking to a client that removed one of those and was looking with their, because I think Toledo had a plan where they were doing grants. I don't think it was much to remove them. Yeah. 
We, we don't have a plan to remove them, but I can tell you that um, we have a plan to never replant them. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, they are no longer prudent. They're our planting plan. themselves. Yeah, so, less than they're, yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, you just, Turn invasive. You just yeah. see them when you're going down the expressway. I was like, oh, my goodness. Yeah. So they're, they're pretty for a week or two. Yeah, for sure. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but if, I don't know if council would want to approve money just to get rid of them in the parks. <laughs> it might be something for the street tree. Mission to talk about to see if that's so, something they want to uh, look at. See street trees, campus. but then also park trees too. Yeah. Like they, they kind of give the recommendation for a lot of the trees in that. Well, that's they true. do. They don't really take lightly to remo <coughs> removal or removal of trees. That yeah. trust me, I sit on that committee also. <laughs> <laughs> right? yeah. Yeah. So what? What I'll I'll bring it up. I'll, I'll mention that it was mentioned. Yeah, and I feel like just like now that the state of Ohio is like this is like they're outlaw basically like well they're not allowing land oh, not outlaw, just, but just you can't sell yeah. them anymore i feel like it's a great effort to go well there's a reason for all this right now so we have quite a few all over there. Our, i mean it's you'd be good. shocked we have thousands of them i mean planted by the city oh, oh yeah. so to go remove them we would have <laughs> oh, huge yeah. expense they're all the, whole. In the, the older <laughs> suburbs or uh, subdivisions and stuff like that so yeah we've started taking some of them out though okay. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So, any other feedback to Rick? So it sounds like you're you're asking for some thoughts that we may have about what sorts of amenities might be included at parks. Has the city ever done anything, even maybe through something informal through its Facebook page, for example, to just survey? I mean, we're just half a dozen people here, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> we did one, one, two surveys uh, before I left. One was for the branding, and the new branding that rolled out, and then the other was for, um, it was with the police division, but I'm blanking on what they did. Um, we, so we, we were dabbling in it. It's hard because we kind of got our hand slapped for it not being like scientific because we would just use like Google survey and we would make up the questions ourselves. So that's going to cost money to have like a scientific Does study. Does have to done. be scientific? Well, yeah, what I'm wondering, I mean, yeah, that's this, why we did it. If you don't mind. Um, so once we're coming up with some of these plans for the parks, I'm sure we'll probably come up with some sort of committee, especially for the um, 750000 put aside for Woodland. Um, I would encourage to see anyone in practice if they want to come be part of that. I don't know you're to be part of which committee? The committee when we put together said, so we're doing um, something similar oh, for the Orleans right now. And um, we'll get some more of that stuff back home, we'll try to keep you informed as, as we get a little closer to things. But um, invite we'll somebody up. from this group is what you're thinking. Yeah, maybe yes. just a couple people that are in it. Anybody might be interested to, to be involved with this. We've in the parks every month now, on a regular basis. So just uh, some feedback Fine. on that one. Um, and then, I don't know if any of you saw, but unfortunately, it looks like uh, Aaron and Dustin are going to be resigning. Um, so if you know anyone who might be interested um, having their applications in, I'm going to be talking to a few people as well, so we can fill this in quickly. I think we have three new events. There's 12 seats for us. 12? Yeah, we got to get a new uh, co So we at least have two seats that are open. I think there might be a, a third one. Let me check on that here corner real quick. So we have 11 members and two high school students. So I think that includes. And two shall be high school students. So there would be nine. So we got Chris and Alex. So I have three of yeah. Let so me know. So we sat in the mayor's office. Double pay. <laughs> so see if that works. Um, but yeah, we reach out to people you know, anyone you know that might be interested in serving on this a few times a year. Um, and uh, tell them to sit at the mayor's office, talk to Elaine in the mayor's office. She can get that information. I think the application's online, visible off. Um, and uh, we can do those on uh, any other questions? Yeah, just a little bit. Um, can you give us more insight on what you mean by people want a passive park south of McKinley Woods, just a, like a trail and woods? So, 
what uh, one of the concerns was is having a large parking lot there. They don't want to be a destination. Their biggest concern is having too much traffic coming in because Coke Court is turned into a uh, great racing track, I guess. There's no stop sign from one end to the next. Uh, and so they've got a lot of people speeding on there. Their concern is, uh, let me do put this in, um, that there is something that's going to attract a lot of people from outside that it's only going to have, uh, have that uh, the speeding issue just and get even worse. Um, and with the children running around, they don't want anything to get hit. And, and I don't blame them for their concerns. And so that's why I think it's important to really look at that. I think the, um, I, sure probably chief and first are looking at possible stop signs along the way or some other ways to help slow the traffic down as well. Uh, but I think what they really want is just try to keep it as small as possible. I, the example I gave them was the high centennial without and the baseball diamond or anything else in there. I mean, you probably see how many cars are parked in the parking lot when there's not a baseball team going. Which is maybe one, it's usually neighborhood parks there because <laughs> they don't have to room there to drive up to that. So, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Thoughts, concerns, or any further remarks? <laughs> I'll take it all. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Thanks you. a lot. All right, other business, I believe Mr. Ross has. Well, I mean, I think there's some new folks on the committee that sort of the students are new this year, and I think it'd be good at the end of this year, and I like to do this, is give a recap of all the things that we actually have done in the parks that are positive things, rather than sit at a meeting and say, I, you know, saw this or saw that. I think there's a lot of great things going on that we've accomplished in the last two years, as you said. Yeah. And I'm pretty proud of what's going on, especially at Woodlands, because I think there was a lot of invasive underbrush that was growing, and we cleaned all that out. You can actually see it from 795 now, and I think it looks really, really yeah. good from the road, and it is a heavily used park. I think Rotary's probably second to uh, Woodlands Park, but Woodland has a lot of activity in it, so it's, it's a nice park. But for all parks last year, we purchased and installed touch-free light switches, water faucets, flush valves for urinals, commodes, and all the park restrooms in an effort to go hands-free. Part of the COVID push, but we also address those uh, concerns. Over the winter, we re rebuilt 13 new park kiosks that are installed throughout the park system to clean up all the, I call it sign blade people want to have signs don't do this don't do that don't do this and we put them all on one but they're also hard to maintain around each individual sign so we put them all on kiosk and clean up the park entrance looks we purchased a new chipper um, to remove branches and clean up the parks when we have windstorms so we've addressed some some need there um, bucket truck to do a better job of, uh, cleaning and trimming up some of the trees even removal sometimes uh, we have to do that once in a while three meadows park when we make improvements that <laughs> we took a lot. They of, freaked out last year. Yeah, panicked. So we took care of it. And then bicentennial, we were just some highlights. We removed old bollards to clean up the parking areas, and then we also we uh, installed some new ones to clean that that look up. So we've done some things there. Um, we down in Hood Park, I was going to replace the flagpole, but lo and behold, there's a historic committee that stop. Don't replace that flagpole. You're gonna you're gonna paint it because it's a hundred year old flagpole and there's a lot of historic value. So I repainted that. We also replaced the old port, called a port a lot uh, corral down there on the right hand side as you go down to the parking area. Municipal Park installed additional fencing at Meyer Field. All the Meyer and Field improvements that we made there, we also installed a, a fence at, we call it Field 5, um, to create a, a softball diamond. The neighbors were complaining balls got into their you know backyards and there was no designated softball field throughout the city. So since there was a designated baseball field, they wanted a designated softball, so we created that with Field 5 out at Municipal Park, so that was a nice improvement. Um, let's see, what else have we done? Some River Crest, uh, we've made some additional repairs to those baseball fields there, two, three, and four in the fall. Uh, also, we're in the process of continuing to make a major repair on Field 1, for those of you that have uh, kids that play baseball and we get out there. But I'm, I think overall, those baseball fields are very well kept and they drain great and they're, they're probably, a, I know they're a lot better in the park systems that I look at. Those fields are in really, really good shape. But we're in a major repair mode right now on field one. Rivercrest, uh, let's see, was there anything else? Yes, we also repaired all the dugout fences, uh, the trip hazards that were along those fence lines. Um, what else did we do? I think I mentioned that. River Riverside. I think a great project was we rebuilt the cannon stands from within. We had a couple of our staff who are carpenters um, re actually rebuild the stands and we refurbished the cannons and dressed up that whole area at the top side of Riverside Park. 
And the Gold Star Memorial is going in here, like I had mentioned earlier, uh, in the end of May, so that's going to be a nice improvement down there. Most people think that's a nice improvement. Some of the neighbors were a little concerned. But, uh, Rotary Park, we installed 10 new concrete trash cans uh, for Park District grant fund that we received from Wood County, so those were nice improvements there. Uh, we installed eight new uh, picnic tables at the shelter house, but I can see where they're not rented as frequent as you might think, but they do get in the way probably during high demand time. So we'll look at those, that idea to install some additional uh, picnic tables out there. Obviously the inclusive playground was a huge improvement to that park. It is very heavily used now. Um, the, the restrooms there as well, I think is a nice improvement. Three Meadows, uh, the large pond, as you have probably seen, we're installing erosion control around the, around the pond. We're also gonna continue the plan this year is to continue all the way around the pond, just leaving that sand beach the way it is, but we're gonna continue that erosion control and clean up that whole look of that Three Metals Pond. We have to probably remove a couple trees on the shoreline, but the plan is we get about 30 donated trees at the end of every year from the Levis Commons uh, group, and we'll replant some of those out there to make sure that we address the landscaping and the look. I, I'd like to cover the whole look of that expressway at Three Metals Pond, so plant as many trees as we can to it's a noise barrier and it's, I just don't like looking at that. So we'll, we'll continue to plant trees in that park. Um, what other improvements we've, uh, we also repaired, actually replaced the sidewalks that were broken up in that park and installed a new kayak rack. I don't know if anybody's been, did you notice that? Did you see our new kayak rack? You need to get out there and see that. We a nice improvement there. Um, <clears throat> so that was installed this spring and, and uh, renovated. And then we also installed a kayak launch down there at Three Meadows. When we did the erosion project. Woodlands, we removed all the invasive plant material, Woodlands Park, um, and repaired a lot of the old covered branches. We planted 28 spruce trees last fall um, to take care of the air frisbee sh uh, shots. We added six, oh, actually, it was six new tee pads, not four, so that needs to be corrected. We'll be installing concrete pads again this year um, for additional lengthening of those tees. We hydro seeded a lot of the areas around the parking lot. We actually added 10 parking spaces in that parking lot and, and also repaired the parking lot last fall. Um, also the Great, Judy wanted me to remind everybody, because I think it was noted that there were some trash in the parks. There's a Great American Cleanup that goes on every week. We do it every Saturday. So this week, I wrote it down, I think we're gonna be, somebody had mentioned in one of the notes, Rotary, I believe, is where we're at. So, um, that's it. I mean, that's some of the recap plans for this year. Yeah, it really is. I mean, and there's, I can do that report at the end of the year and we can report back to you. I think the first two years I made most of the improvements and now it's going to feel like year three, I'm going to look at my list and it's not going to be anywhere near as great as the, you know, as the first two years. But we're also going to this year add three uh, playgrounds to the park. So I'm excited about that. We hope we're going to go out to bid shortly for that process and, and then install new three, three new playgrounds in the park system. We purchased new mowers, um, a hydro seeder this year is planned, uh, baseball field improvements as I had mentioned at Rivercrest is planned for 2022, um, municipal park restroom and, uh, renovations are going to happen this year, erosion control I had mentioned that, and new park signs at all the entrances are on the list to, to address as well. Those are a little bit tired and outdated so we're planning on replacing those as well. Um, and I think that's it for my list. But I appreciate the opportunity to at least tell you what we're doing. And some of the things that you see, like I had mentioned earlier, just bring them to our attention immediately and we'll address them to the best of our ability. I can't install a you know, skateboard park overnight. <laughs> things that we can address that are broken, we'll fix. And I appreciate your effort. So, Rob, uh, sorry, you, yep. you mentioned the pond at Three Meadows Park. I think that's a great idea to put the trees in as a barrier to the expressway. Um, there was a discussion among this group last year about there apparently used to be a path that went around the, the pond or there was a hope that there would be a path. Is that part of the discussion? About There's it? still a path. I think they want, I think there was somebody that wanted to pave it. I don't remember that being part of the discussion. I, I thought it was a walking path. It will be another. There was a conversation regarding uh, making sure that you reinforce the path. I think that there was a part of it where it stops yeah. Yeah. and then trying to redo it. But yeah, I think what the conversation was at the recreation committee was waiting until we got out the uh, pond reinforced and then coming back and see 
photo okay. comes and grab the background. I don't think it was the case, but yeah. I think it was just to make sure that it was a uh, useful block of capital or whatever. Okay. It does die off or it's back a bit. It's pretty shallow back there. And I, actually, when we get that's exactly right, Jonathan, because once we get to, to the backside of that pond, we're going to lose a lot of depth to do that right, so we'll see. Okay. Yeah. And there might not be as much space. There may still be space to put a path around it, but maybe not now as many trees around that area, but that's okay because there's some, there's still plenty of trees in that. I'm taking off to your right of that pond where it's open yet. We planted a few of those trees last year that were donated, and I think we're going to continue to close that right section off and so you don't see the expressway, but we can we can do that. I think there is still a path back there. I've not been back there. I didn't yeah. know that it was yeah. discussed last year as a full loop around the pond. Part of the erosion project, I got some feedback when we did we did the first section, the third, first third of that. There was a, an older gentleman who was fishing out there with his grandson, I believe, and he asked if we could install some concrete pads so they could fish off the pad. Yeah. So we're going to install the dock this year, and I thought it was a good idea, actually. So we're going to do some walk-down areas, kind of like that kayak launch ramp where you could actually walk down to closer to the water. So our plan is to, to uh, make some adjustments to the original plan to give people easier access down to the water because it's, it is difficult to walk across the stones when the water's down low for somebody my age. So. <laughs> Have you had any uh, incidents between the pickleballers and the basketball players recently? Not this year yet, but it's early. So no. I was I was there uh, last month when it was nice out. And, you know, it was totally fine, but I can definitely see how that could happen just because it's different cultures, different generations, loud music on one side, and, and they're both they're both well used and both busy. Um, I just was curious if anything was I don't get all the police reports, but yeah, I, I'm sure it would call. So far nothing serious. So from a from a basketball standpoint, um, is there are we happy with the one court? I guess there's the half court and bicentennial. Uh, has there been an interest in creating new courts? Right. There was some, uh, I think, part of the master plan for Rotary Park basketball court. It was. <laughs> I think it's turned into a pickleball court. Um, but I, I don't know about the details. Um, I've, made, I've been mentioned that uh, we are lacking in basketball courts. I've talked to the version of that one a couple times. Um, I think as things are continuing to look at to see if there's a way to put them down, we can look at that. But that's something I know. You see that, and the only two parts that I can think of is municipal, and I think there's one right behind the fire station. Small, small, uh, three metal small pond. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't remember seeing that. But yeah. Bicentennial. Very small. Has the half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I don't even count bicentennial because of the half, but I made a suggestion maybe we should turn it into a full one back there. Not sure what that will do with our neighbors. Yeah, I, I can understand that. Um, but I'm trying to think, like, a, is, is there a full court in Maumee? Because I'm not even sure. Like, it could be that people are coming from outside the area just because there's few public full courts. I know Rossford has a couple. They keep those locked in the evening uh, that are nice facilities. And I'm trying to think if surrounding areas have full public courts. Waterville has a basketball court in Waterville that they use. It's heavily used. Yep. Mm -hmm. They told me library had one back on the yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Yes. I just don't. It seems like that's a that's a well used amenity. In the, you know, if it's, is one enough? Is that appropriate? I don't have a good thought on that. I'd love to see them everywhere. <laughs> You know, if they're used, yeah, something we should talk about, I guess. Anything That's else? It. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thanks for the time. Um, anybody else have anything for other business? We should talk about vice chair. <laughs> we don't have to do it tonight. We can always do it next time. Make that an action item if you want. So if somebody wants to be vice chair, we can do that next time. I think. Anybody feeling strongly? Okay, let's do that. <laughs> That's an action item for next time, Vice Chair. Okay. Um, the. Yes, um, cool. 
think that's it. So, review of action items for the meeting. We'll conclude this here. Uh, so, your action items are send emails to Greg or Rob. Copy me. And a copy, copy Rob yeah. and Jonathan as well. Um, so that uh, when things come up, uh, instead of maybe instead of bringing them up here, kind of airing our dirty laundry, we can take care of it there and then be a little bit more, I guess, to, like to the point, succinct when we. Bring so your park reports. It's easy to, to bring it up and how quickly the city for actually just let people yeah. know that it's easy to reach out to the city if you see an issue. Right, that's great. Yeah, so there you go. So email them, um, email stuff on the website. Yeah, right. Right. So, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think I'd love the opportunity to resolve them before anyone else sees them. Yep, I think that's great. And then talk about how quickly we get resolved and just be a really good report. We might even be able to trim our time yeah. down too, which is always nice, especially on a Monday night. Uh, and then the other thing we'll do for action item next time is elect a vice chair. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. Anybody else have anything to conclude? I'm not going to be here next month. I don't know if we need to just, if you need attendance at a time, what else? No, I don't need attendance at a time. No. So It'll be what it is. If you're not there, you get voted. I can nominate somebody. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I am willing to nominate somebody right now. Very decisive. That's what happened with last time, I think. Yeah. Um, no, that's all right. Uh, we won't, we'll refrain from doing that this time. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> all right. Anybody have anything else for the good of the order? All right. Uh, the next meeting is scheduled for June 6th, Monday, June 6th at 7 uh, here. And we could move it off site, but we need to know well in advance. So how far in advance? As far as I think there's a by law, it has to be sunshine requires at least twenty four hour notice. Okay. I would suggest even more notice. It just at least way. a week, I'd say. Because it has to really for my own selfish purposes so that way I know I can show up here and what everyone is. <laughs> is. Is anyone else even interested in meeting in a park or is that just my preference? Um, I, I personally am not because I prefer to have this recorded for okay. meeting minute purposes. But I that's the only. What's that? I understand it makes it a little easier. Yeah. It doesn't make double check. All right. But, well, and we can know. always always discuss. So, all right. Um, I don't think I need to do anything. So, the meeting's concluded. So, it's done. Thanks. All right. Have a good evening, Thank everyone. You. Thank you. Have a good month. Yeah. yeah. Right. I'll email and the stuff for what Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. That'd be great. So, so um, we'll be the other oh. <laughs> That's, oh, man. I know. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I thought about skipping the Outer Banks to do the meeting here, but it seemed like yeah, I was yeah. Yeah. for we are bringing four 17 year old girls. I was one of all of them. Come in to talk. Can you trust them? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. um, mini engine repair. Big girl fight. Oh, you're touring. It's pretty easy to see it.